Oh. One of the things I do in my spare time is bowl. I've been bowling for as long as I can remember. And a few years back, one of the guys in the bowling alley caught me while I was packing up. And he said, hey, I've been really meaning to ask you, what do you do for a living? And I said, it's kind of hard to explain, but let me give it a shot. I help people lead themselves in a more effective way so they can add the most value to their environment, business and personal. And he puts his hands on his hips, kind of tilts his head and says, that sounds interesting. But he's looking at me with the, this guy doesn't really have a job look on his face. So I elaborate a bit and I say, look, I don't like titles, but formally, I'm a leadership coach and business practitioner. But if I could choose my title, I would call myself a king and queen maker. I'm the person that nobody knows about that helps to bring out the greatness in the people that everybody knows about. So he says, so you're like a real life Jiminy Cricket from <laughs> Pinocchio. Got it. Well, Jiminy, let me ask you this. What's the number one thing that stops people from being successful? And I said, oh, that's simple. People don't know themselves. And because people don't know themselves, they struggle at creating a relationship with themselves that will yield success. And the worst part about it is that when you try to create the awareness and bring it to their attention, they rarely want to do the deep internal work to improve that relationship. So he looks at me and says, man, sounds like you got a tough job. And he picks up his bowling equipment and he walks away. And all I could think to myself was, he's right. It is a tough job. Because one of the hardest things for us to do as humans is to deal with ourselves. And if you push people to do so before they feel like they're ready, it alienates them, regardless of your intention. But I have to ask, will we ever be ready to deal with ourselves? At what point will we take inexcusable accountability for the results and successes that we are not achieving in our lives? I say now is as good a time as any. So, quick show of hands. How many of us want to be successful? Okay, great. Now the bigger question. How much more success, however you define it, money, fame, power, fulfillment, doesn't matter. How much more success could you experience in your life if you improve the relationship you had with yourself? Now, before you say, I have a great relationship with myself, I love me, I will go on record and say, I don't believe you. <laughs> but seriously, how well do you know yourself? Really? Do you even like you? I know the saying goes, treat others as you would want to be treated. But I believe that the real question is, do you treat you as you would want to be treated? I ask these questions because as it turns out, successful people create great relationships. No two ways about it. But the most important relationship that successful people create is with themselves. And I believe that there are two things necessary to create a relationship with yourself that will yield success. The first is integrity. Now, integrity is a touchy topic, especially when you examine how many people perceive it. When you talk to people about integrity, there are two things that stand out in the data. The first thing is that people often equate integrity with what you do when nobody else is watching that impacts other people. The second thing is that people talk about integrity as a relationship between commitments made externally to other people and the consequences of not keeping those commitments. 
But digging deeper into the origin of the word tells a slightly different narrative. See, the word integrity evolved from the Latin adjective integer, meaning whole or complete. Textbook definitions include the condition of being unified, or my personal favorite, the state of internal consistency. But these words and phrases are nowhere to be found in the data when talking about integrity. In fact, one of the biggest findings is that the responsibility that we have to ourselves is absent in the data when talking about integrity. But what the data does tell us is that when we, when it comes to commitments made externally to other people, we typically have a very high level of integrity. But when it comes to us and the commitments made internally to ourselves, we typically have a very low level of integrity. And one of the things that separates those of us that are successful from those of us that aren't is that successful people tend to have this unwavering sense of internal consistency, which is derived from their ability to keep the commitments they've made to themselves. Keeping commitments to yourself is how you create the state of being whole and internally consistent. So if you want to improve your level of integrity, it's simple. Do what you said you were going to do for you. If you told yourself you were going to start a business, start a business. If you told yourself you were going to lose the weight, lose the weight. But don't flake out on yourself. Because though you may not think it matters, I can assure you it has an impact in an area that you least expect, your confidence. Now, I know that may seem a little weird, so let me explain. The word confidence can be traced back to the Latin verb fidir, meaning to trust. So to trust yourself literally means that you have confidence in yourself. But the uncomfortable truth is that many of us don't trust ourselves because we know what commitments we made that we didn't follow through on. Nobody else has that list but us. So when it comes time to muster up the confidence and the courage to explore our greatness, the list of commitments that we didn't follow through on is standing there like a bouncer in front of a nightclub, not giving us access to the best parts of ourselves. So how can we expect to maintain a high level of internal consistency if we're constantly chipping away at our confidence by not keeping the commitments we've made to ourselves. We are taking ourselves for granted, and it is the biggest blocker to creating a relationship with us that will yield success. Let me give you an example. I remember after lecturing for a group of MBA students, one of them asked me, what was the most difficult part of your leadership journey? And after thinking about it, I said, the most difficult part of my leadership journey was recognizing that I didn't have a good enough relationship with me to be who I knew I could be. Which brings me to the second thing necessary to create a relationship with yourself that will yield success. And it's the big D word, discipline. And at the time, I was not disciplined enough. On the outside, people thought I was disciplined. But the truth was that I lacked discipline on the things that mattered most to my personal growth. I could keep a commitment to everybody else but me. So I decided to change that habit. Since the new year was right around the corner, I had a plan. I was going to make a New Year's resolution, but like a real one and really hold myself to it. So I chose the smallest, most insignificant thing I could find, so I had zero excuses to not keep the commitment. I was going to make my bed every day before I stepped foot in the office. 
Now, first time I did it, I timed myself. It took me two minutes and 38 seconds. And I said to myself, if I can't find two minutes and 38 seconds in every day to make my bed, I don't deserve to achieve my goals. Day after day, week after week, I kept the commitment to myself. By the time the summer rolled around, I was feeling good. I had full confidence that I'd be able to make it to the end of the year. Until what I call the test happened. You ever have one of those mornings where nothing seems to go right, regardless of what you do? That was the test for me. I slept through my alarm. I couldn't find anything to wear. By the time I did make it out of the house, I had to go back because I left my wallet. Not to mention, we lost power that morning because of the thunderstorms. I mean, it was the epitome of Murphy's Law. So I pushed through all of that, and now I'm sitting in traffic on my way to work. But something just didn't feel right. Because up to that point, I had made my bed for 197 days straight. And I was about to jeopardize that for a meeting. And I was not okay. I tried justifying it to myself. Like, eh, it's no big deal. You make your bed when you get home. But this was a huge deal. This wasn't just about making my bed. This was the moment that represented why I wasn't who I knew I could be. This was it. I had a clear pattern. First, I would make the commitment. Then, I would make enough progress to feel good about myself without actually keeping the commitment. I was cheating myself, and I was finally aware of the pattern. And I have this saying, and it is terrible English, but it goes, once you know, you can't unknow. So I took the first U-turn I could find, and I went back home to make my bed. And I know that seems small and insignificant, but let me tell you, I was so proud of myself. And what the experience taught me was that creating a relationship with yourself happens in the moments you refuse to accept the narrative that other relationships are more important. Discipline is nothing more than integrity actioned. But as Nigerian author Chenowa Achebe once wrote, one of the truest tests of integrity is its blunt refusal to be compromised. And what I found is that we like to take shortcuts. And when we do, we compromise ourselves in the process. We conveniently hide behind the armor the responsibilities in our lives provide us. We find solace in those that need us because it gives us a sense of purpose. And over time, that sense of purpose becomes our identity. Then we confuse the identity we found in service to others with knowing ourselves. When in actuality, we've been so busy giving and doing and being for everybody else that we haven't given much of anything to ourselves. And because we don't give to ourselves, we unconsciously expect others to overcompensate. And we put these unspoken, unrealistic expectations on some of the most important relationships in our lives. We don't believe in us but we expect others to believe in us. We don't keep the commitments we've made to us, but we expect others to keep their commitments to us. We don't prioritize our happiness, but we expect others to prioritize our happiness. Spoiler alert! There is no one in your life that is going to do the work for you that you are not willing to do for yourself. Nobody. 
This is where discipline comes in. Because creating a relationship with yourself will take time. But as I tell my sons, you don't stop when you're tired. You stop when it's done. It's not an overnight process. If you don't believe me, think about the most meaningful relationships in your life. Like the people you love the most. Now ask yourself, how long did it take to create that relationship? How much time did you spend getting to know one another? Now I ask, have you spent the same amount of time and resources in developing a relationship with yourself as you have with others? What I found is that the answer is typically no. But creating a relationship with yourself is the prerequisite for achieving success that nobody talks about because it is scary and it's uncomfortable. But if you can go beyond the fear, if you can go beyond the discomfort, not only will you fall in love with yourself, but you will transform your life. We are all born with the code on how to achieve success. But what nobody tells us is that the code is embedded deep in our identity. And who you are is defined by how well you can keep the commitments you've made to yourself. So push the boundaries. Do the deep internal work and give yourself access to the best parts of you by always showing your ID, integrity and discipline. By doing so, you will create a relationship with yourself that will yield success and unlock your limitless potential. Thank you very much.